came from behind his desk and he pointed at me and said, don't you ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. And he taught me three things. He said, if you want to become successful in life, young man, he said, number one, you got to change your mindset. He said, you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. When you live a hard-centered life, deciding that you're going to live a life that will outlive you. You're going to live a life that counts, a life that will build a legacy and change the planet. The easiest thing I've done was to get out from under the labels and to live the life that I live. The most difficult thing I've ever done was to believe that I can do it. When you don't know what's impacting you, and it's, it's something that that's holding you down and you're not aware of it. You live in a dominant culture that is designed to destroy your sense of self and your belief in yourself. And, and you have to learn ways in which you can begin to connect with this power that you have within yourself to handle where you are. The key is to be constantly in a perpetual process of discovering the truth of who you are and fighting constantly to look for ways in which you can escape the inner conversation. I speak to audiences around the world and I, and I train speakers as well and I, I tell them that when you speak that there's, a, there's an objective that you want to achieve when you speak to an audience because how people live their lives is a result of the story they believe about themselves. So you as a speaker, when you speak in this program, when people see you, what you do is distract, dispute, and inspire. You distract people from their current story with your guests and the questions that you ask through the process of the ongoing questioning and the way in which they respond and the things they have learned. You dismantle their current belief system and inspire them to, to create a new chapter with their lives. And so, but that's an ongoing process. Of, of constantly interrupting that conversation, what psychologists call your self-explanatory style, because life is, is going to beat up on you in so many ways, and many things, they come back, you know, negative thoughts and, and how you feel about yourself, they don't die, they, they come back once you stop doing the maintenance work on your mind listening to motivational messages, going to seminars and workshops, spending time quietly listening to the still small voice within. Uh, who am I really? Is this really me? Am I giving my best? Uh, am I just reflecting what's around me? Because all of these various things affect how we show up in life. And so having a strategy to continuously uh, find ourselves reaching higher. Robert Shuler had a book, is not very popular, but I loved it. It's called Peak to Peak, U-P-E-A-K to P-E-E-K, because you're constantly reaching higher to find out and discover your, your better self. Richard Wright said it best. He said, the impulse to dream has slowly been beaten out of me through the experiences of life. So when you live in a culture that is designed to destroy your sense of self, to, where you are marginalized, where you, you have a feeling of being hopeless and powerless and you're terrorized. Seelman talk about the fact that between ages zero and five, we determine what's available to us and what's not available to us. And so... There are certain things I could not do, certain places I could not go. They used to have signs on Miami Beach that said, Jews, dogs, and coloreds not allowed. And so now you have to operate within the constraints of, of the dominant society and the things that they have created for you. And it's a challenge to see yourself beyond that and to work to get outside of that even after those laws have changed because that has become so much a part of you, you unconsciously operate within the parameters of what has been put in place. Like you go, to, you're driving on the expressway, the four or five, and, and, and you'll get off on an exit that you weren't going in that direction, but you unconsciously did it because you've done it so many times that many people, because 
they're not making a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to think outside of what life has thrown at them, they end up doing the same thing over and over and over again. Einstein said that thinking that has brought me this far has created some problems that this thinking can't solve. And so through relationships, through reading, through studies, through goals and dreams beyond your comfort zone, it it allows you to begin to live out of your imagination as opposed to out of your history. Disney said the imagination is a preview of what's to come. And so as a kid, I, I dreamed a lot about taking care of my mother. I used to go with her to work, to clean homes and and she, she kept her children and she cooked for these wealthy families. My mother could bake a sweet potato pie so good you couldn't eat it with your shoes on. You had to take your shoes off so you could wiggle your toes. And I used to look at these big, beautiful mansions and said, Mama, what is it, Leslie? When I become a man, I'm going to buy you a big, beautiful home just like this. Oh, you don't have to do this. I said, I know. But you didn't have to adopt us either. And... You did. And so I'm here with you because of two women. One gave me life. The other one gave me love. God took me out of my biological mother's womb and placed me in the heart of my adopted mother. And because of her example and my love for her and the passion that I felt in my heart, I've got to do something to to make her proud. I've got to do something to put myself in position to be able to take care of her, that drove me. Nietzsche said, if you know the why for living, you can endure almost anyhow. I believe that all of us have a responsibility that we want to live a life that will outlive us, the work that you're doing. There are people that you will never meet whose lives that you've transformed that you, you are living a life that will outlive you. Just think about the fact that this program has given a lot of people hope, and there's hope in the future. It gives you power in the present. Every 40 seconds, someone commits suicide. But because of something you say or some guests that you've invited, and, and as they share their story, you interrupt that story of being hopeless and powerless and and not wanting to be here anymore. And because they took the time to watch, you create an experience. Oliver Wendell Holmes said that once a man or woman's mind has been expanded with an idea, concept, or experience, it can never be satisfied to going back to where it was. And so at the end of the program, at the end of one of your presentations, there are people who, because of you, their lives will be transformed and they will become a a pencil, as Mother Teresa would say, in the hand of God and start writing a new chapter with their lives. They have to expose themselves to something that will give them a different vision of themselves. And in addition to that, they have to put themselves in a community of what I call OQP, only quality people. A gentleman who dramatically transformed my life, I was a junior at Booker T. Washington High School in Miami, Florida. And I went in his class looking for another friend. And the other kids started laughing, saying, he's Leslie, he's DT. And he said, what's DT? He's, his brother is smart, but he's the dumb twin. And, and I said, I am, sir. And he came from behind his desk and he pointed.
said, don't you ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. And he taught me three things. He said, if you want to become successful in life, young man, he said, number one, you got to change your mindset. He said, you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. Number two, practice OQP, only quality people. You earn within two to three thousand dollars of your closest friends. I found that out. I left all my bro- broke friends. I said, y'all got to go. Because <laughs> I used to be so broke, I pass the bank and trip the alarm, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and the third thing he said, develop your communication skills, because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. He said, those are three major things that you want to work on that will liberate you from living in Liberty City, living in poverty and over town. It will help to escape out of where you are right now because I see you watching me and I know you want more. I can see the hunger in your eyes. That's why my book is about to come out called, You Gotta Be Hungry. (laughs) So how do people get hungry? You get hungry by finding something that's you. I believe that all of us are born unique, but most of us die copies. You gotta find out what is it that turns you on, what resonates with you. The key to that hunger-driven life is a heart-centered life. I didn't do what I'm doing for years because of my programming, because of the culture in which I was raised in. But Mr. Washington, on that day, we became friends and and he taught me not only someone's opinion of you does, does not have to determine your reality, he said that you have to work on yourself and you have to have an unstoppable attitude and no excuse is acceptable and you've got to, to make it a, a, a priority, a non-negotiable in your life and hold a, a constant vision of what it is you want to achieve. See it accomplished and go all out. Find a way to win in spite of the setbacks, in spite of the disappointments, in spite of your failures. I, I tell people when I'm giving presentations, your way to success. I have a saying is life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. (laughs) And so those experiences of, of going after goals that's beyond your comfort zone and having relationships that will challenge you and surrounding yourself with coaches and mentors who can take you to a place within yourself that you can't go by yourself because you can't read the label when you're locked in the box. And so those experiences, they challenge you to go to that next level and continue to move forward in your life doing new and exciting things that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has in the heart of mankind what God has in store for you when you live a hard-centered life deciding that you're going to live a life that will outlive you. You're going to live a life that counts, a life that will build a legacy and change the planet.